Thanks, Wesley. Here in South Mississippi, woven into the fabric of our culture is the great food, especially this time of year with king cakes. But that food can sometimes be a problem, especially when it comes to the dental health of our children. Joining me in the studio to talk about National Children's Dental Health Month from South Mississippi Smiles is Dr. Cameron Larson and Taylor Leatherwood. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. us. You like how I tied that whole food thing into, yeah. So <laughs> I have just recently been through this because my six-year-old just went to the dentist for the first time. But what, Dr. Larson, is a good age to, you know, start thinking about bringing your kid to the dentist for the first time? And for parents that have, are terrified, what, what can you, what do they expect on that first visit? So we encourage parents to start bringing their kids in as early as six months. You know, around that age, some kids are starting to get their teeth. If they haven't gotten teeth, we still encourage them to come in. It's important for parents to get their education, especially first time parents. What do I do? How often do I brush their teeth? If they don't have teeth, what should I do to help take care of their mouth? So it's good for them to come in as early as six months and then start to make it that habit, that six month routine so that we can um, help encourage build those habits with the parent and with the patients. So we're way behind on the six-year-old. However, uh, my newborn did has had a visit already because she had a lip and a tongue tie issue that was addressed and that was a, allowed us to get in there and, and see the dentist right out the gate. Not that she'll ever remember it, but definitely we got in there early. Um, so it's, cavities, how do you, I, I know it's, it, it's hard to like get children to understand flossing, but it's, it's important to, to make sure. How do you prevent cavities from you know, even forming in the first place? I mean, there's two things that are factors in, in oral health. One is how well you take care of your teeth. We encourage brushing at least twice a day and flossing every night. The other factor is your diet, the amount of sugary drinks and even snacky foods, the carbs and stuff that you take within uh, every day. If you can limit those, eating healthy foods, m drinking lots of water, good healthy habits are going to uh, slow down and even prevent cavities from starting in your mouth. Right, so my, my six-year-old likes to go to bed with something to drink, and, and for a, a while, it was things that shouldn't have been the case, like chocolate milk, tons of sugar. But water, if, if a child needs to go to bed with a drink, water is the best thing because when you go to bed, you, your mouth stops producing that, right? And right. that's what you need. That's another one of those key pieces to keep those cavities away. Yeah, your mouth, your mouth gets really dry at night. That bacteria really flourishes, so you don't want to add that sugar and that's to, to it while you're sleeping. Uh, I had a daughter that went through the same thing. She loved her, her milk at night, and we we started giving her milk about half an hour before bed, then we would brush her teeth and then just give her water to fall asleep with. And so the water is good for keeping the mouth clean as, as well as uh, preventing cavities. And Taylor, you're part of the community relations team there at South Mississippi Smiles. Are parents concerned as well about being able to take part in that first visit? Absolutely. I think it's very important for the or we think it's very important for the parents to go into the appointment rooms if they can um, and be with their children, not only to support the kids so they feel comfortable in the dental office, but also to learn for parent education so they know what, what exactly to do. Right, and you know, it, there, 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 sometimes there's that like fear. I know as a child, I was not a huge fan just because I didn't like people putting their hands in my mouth. It was just, for me, it just didn't make sense. But are, are, on top of that, are there, are there foods and drinks to get to kind of, you know, circumvent that fear. Are there foods and drinks uh, that can help, that can help, that are off limits, actually, I guess would be a better question. Are there certain things that you would say you need to stay away from? I remember my dentist saying, don't ever eat now and leaders because I had sealants on my teeth. And it's like, there are some things that you should just stay away from it if, if at all possible. Yeah, gummy and sticky foods that are gonna stick in your teeth, in between your teeth. Yeah, those are, those are a big no-no as far as cavities. If you do have those things, you definitely encourage them to, to brush and, and make sure they're taking good care of them. Um, sugary drinks, your sodas, your teas that even have some acidity in them, that can weaken the enamel, so it's important to stay away from real sugary and acidic, acidic drinks. Uh, water really is the best thing for, for your mouth as far as keeping it clean and healthy um, and then just other healthy snacks. All right, so, and you guys are always accepting new patients. Absolutely, yes. Perfect. Dr. Larson-Taylor, thanks for joining me this morning. Thank you. Thank